Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My book, Beyond the Lines, is about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today is the very popular news anchor for KITV4. She is Mika Miyashima, and today we are going beyond the news. Hey, Mika, Hello. thanks for joining me on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Rusty. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Now, Mika, I want to ask you about your ethnicity. You know, I'm, I'm half Japanese. What, what is your ethnicity? Yeah, I actually am the same. I'm half Japanese, so my dad is full Japanese. That's right. You know, my last name, Miyashima. And then my mom is Caucasian, a little bit of Irish. So, um, yeah, so I'm 50 50. Half Japanese, too. Hoppas are the best. <laughs> yeah. Hoppas. <laughs> now, I know that you uh, were born in LA and then you grew up in Utah. What sports did you end up playing in your youth? So, I grew up, I, play, I grew up playing soccer and basketball. Those were my two main sports. Um, soccer was my number one. You know, basketball was number two just because the seasons were opposites. It always worked out. Um, and then I actually did, I played lacrosse too randomly my, um, my senior year of high school because my basketball coach was also the lacrosse coach. So, he kind of made some of us play. But, yeah, uh, soccer and basketball were my main sports. And I had a lot of fun playing them. Wow, lacrosse is a tough sport. I, I mean, my college yeah. friends would play lacrosse, and that's tough. And I know that uh, you you ended up going to University of Hawaii. Yes, yeah, I went to UH. So I my freshman year of college, I actually went to University of Redlands, and then I ended up transferring over to UH my sophomore year. So I went to school at UH for four years, graduated, um, and I loved it so much. I mean, I have I actually have family that's from Hawaii. I'm not from here, but um, my dad's cousins, my grandma's sister, they're all born and raised here. So it was nice to come, you know, moving out here, knowing that I had family away from home um, when I couldn't come home for Thanksgiving or, you know, certain holidays. So that definitely played a role in me picking to come to UH. But um, yeah, I, I loved U UH. It was so much fun. So in college, uh, what were you studying? And then where did you start to intern at? So I was a communications major. I didn't know if I wanted to get into journalism or not at the time. Um, so I was a communications major, which is pretty broad. Um, and then I kind of wanted to dabble in, in sports, actually. So I was an intern at KITV. I was a sports intern. Um, but I still, on the weekends, I would go out, you know, with the news crews and actually cover, like, harder news stuff. So I kind of got the best of both worlds. But yeah, I was originally a sports intern um, with Jemai Webster at the time. So that was a lot of fun, but I def it opened my eyes to, you know, what exactly it was like to, to do news. Um, so that was a good experience. And then who knew, like, later on, I would be end up coming back and, you know, actually working for KITV. So small world. So where else did you work at? Once you did the intern at KITV, you moved to the mainland. Where, where were you working at uh, before you came back now to be the news anchor? Right. So I so I moved back to California. Um, and actually, my first job out of college, I actually worked for TMZ Sports. So, um, you know, it's like the celebrity gossip, um, but it was the sports side of it. And it was a lot of fun. It was a fast-paced news environment, but I just realized I didn't really like the, the entertainment too much. I wanted to focus more on hard news. So um, I worked there for a little bit, and then I actually got a job at KABC. That's the ABC station in Los Angeles. Um, I was a news assistant, so I wasn't on air. I was just kind of behind the scenes helping out. You know, I produced the traffic segments, and I would help write some things. Um, and kind of helped the anchors out there. And I put together a newsreel. I went out and filmed a bunch of stand-ups and, you know, followed the reporters out on stories, put together my own demo tape, and I sent it over to um, a couple stations, and I ended up getting the job at KITV, which was awesome. So that's what kind of led me back to Hawaii. I knew I, knew I wanted to come back here eventually, so. Well, we're all, so we're I all happy to have you back as the popular news anchor for, for KITV4. And, Mika, I want to ask you, you know, as the news anchor, what do you, what do you really love about anchoring? There is so many things. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty new 
at this role um, because I started out at KITV as a MMJ, it's a multimedia journalist, um, where, you know, I was doing my own camera work and, you know, you're lugging around a camera, you're in front of the, you're doing the reporting, but um, it's a lot of work. You're focusing on one story, but with anchoring, you're, you know, you're focusing on all the stories. So I, I really felt that I've kind of gotten a better sense of like everything that's happening around the islands, not just my one story of the day. And I, it's tough, but I really like that. I feel like I have a better sense of just, um, you know, all around news, even just around the country as well. So, um, yeah, and, and you, it's just amazing to have that voice to be able to, um, I guess, be a voice for the people, you know, share their stories. That's the main thing that I love about my job. Now, Mika, is there, I mean, is, is it more difficult to be a woman anchor versus a, a male anchor? What, what do you think? I would say, well, I think like in most jobs, there is that, you know, it is a little bit more difficult, I guess I would say. Well, the one thing that comes to mind is when I was out MMJing, you know, I'm, I'm in a dress and I'm in heels trying to do all my work, my physical labor, but I'm like, it would be a lot easier if I didn't have to wear this outfit, if I could just be like a guy and wear my pants and my shirt. But I think it, you know, um, I don't experience it too much at KITV at all, but I think in every job it is a little more difficult being a woman, I would say. Now, what is it about reporting that you like, uh, you know, because reporting and anchoring are so different? Yeah, exactly. Um, I love, yeah, I do, sometimes I get antsy and I do miss going out on stories. So here and there I'll jump in and find something that I, you know, want to do and go out in the field and do it. But I do miss, um, yeah, I miss being out in the field. It's always great to go out. And when you're sharing these impactful stories, it's always awesome to go out and get them and talk to these people or talk to the families, you know, or be at these places where the breaking news is happening. So I do miss sharing certain stories like that um, on a personal level. But, you know, like I said, I still get to go out and do stories here and there. So, so that's nice. What's, what's one of the most impactful stories that you covered, um, you know, in the news uh, so far? Well, I mean, I, I'm just thinking recently, um, a couple stories that I covered were, you know, a, a COVID-19 survivor, um, which was really amazing to talk to him. He was 65 years old, um, you know, was on a ventilator, was saying goodbye to his family. And so, and then he miraculously recovered. I mean, his doctor was calling him literally a miracle. And so I talked to him, I talked to his wife, who was just, you know, say, telling people to take it seriously. And that was a really meaningful story um, because, you know, when it aired, it was kind of more at the time when everyone was really starting to freak out about COVID. It was a, um, a big concern, which it still is. But, um, but I feel like that, that recovery story kind of provided a lot of hope for people. So that was a really, one of my favorites. Um, and then I talked to, you know, a, a, a nurse who was really concerned about going home to her family every night after she would be at the hospital all day. Um, so she was suggesting that, um, you know, healthcare workers get to stay in hotels. And then that actually ended up happening. Hotels for Heroes. So that was a probably one of my favorite stories as well. Oh, wow. And Mika, I know that you had the awesome opportunity to interview the American Idol judges. How, how was that experience for you? Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. I know I was so lucky to have gotten assigned that. But so I actually, I interviewed the judges, you know, because American Idol is ABC. So they came to Aulani last year and filmed, um, you know, they have their showcase round that they film here where there's top 40 contestants. They eliminate half of them. But they are so cool and down to earth. Like when I first interviewed them, I was kind of nervous. I'm like, oh my gosh, these are really big celebrities, you know, but they were so nice, so easy to talk with. Um, I love Katy Perry's outfit. She had her, you know, her flower hat and her, she was just so extra, but it was, it was so much fun. I would have never thought I would ever meet any of those celebrities. So a lot of fun. And it was fun to talk to them about Hawaii too. Did they ask you to audition on American Idol too? Oh no, I don't think, I think they would second guess if they heard me sing, <laughs> they wouldn't be asking me back, but no, it was just fun to pick their brains. And then of course, you know, Ryan Seacrest was there too, which I've always been an American Idol fan. So it was just a lot of fun. And Alani is always a good time being there. I love Disney. So <laughs> well, I Mika, felt lucky to be able to 
Oh yeah, <laughs> and Mika, you know, it, you know, in my books, um, I have two books now: Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game. And I talk about creating a culture of excellence and teamwork. What what is the culture like at KITV among your news team? You know, we're still we have a lot of new people that have come in, um, and including myself. I mean, we've had a lot of changes, you know, over the past couple of years. Um, obviously, Paula O'Connor retired. She was so amazing. She was the rock of KITV for you know so long. Um, and so we're all kind of adjusting, but I think we're all doing that together. And, you know, I love everybody that I work with so much. And um, it really is about teamwork, like you're saying, you know, um, you know, we lean on each other. If, if someone needs help or, you know, I'll grab this for you. It's just like news is such a fast paced environment that it's, it's not going to work if you don't get along with each other, I think. So, and even if, you know, if someone makes a mistake, just correct them on the side, help them out with pronunciation. You know, we have a lot of people on the mainland who who work for KITV a couple of our reporters so um but yeah we all just kind of learn from each other and it's a good atmosphere there I really I love everyone that I work with yeah, and teamwork is so key because you know everyone's a reflection of each other so all of you yeah. you know represent KITV so I always say as you know as a coach you know a chain is only as strong as its weakest link yeah so true exactly yeah and so and whether it's just like, okay, pull up your mask, make sure it's covering your nose, like little things like that. We just got to look out for each other, you know, make sure that we are representing the station well. Um, but yeah, it's all about being a team, definitely. Now, you mentioned Paula Akana. What, what was it about Paula that made her so great? What did you learn of, about her? Yeah, she, you know, I mean, obviously she's Hawaiian and she's so invested in all of like Hokulea. She just had so many different... Um, amazing qualities. I mean, she was an amazing journalist. Um, just something about her presence on camera was just so calming, you know, and she's so sweet. I mean, she's the exact same on and off the anchor desk. Um, so she, and, you know, she was such a great mentor to all of us. She was always so kind and like willing to help if I had a question or needed help with something, her advice. Um, so honestly, like stepping into her role, I was just like, what would Paula do? That's what I find myself thinking all the time. I'm like, how would Paula handle this? I want to try and, you know, she's just so graceful and everybody loves Paula. So she's amazing. Well, I think you're making her very proud. And, and Mika, yeah. I, I know that you, um, you, you met the rock and, uh, I know that he was really excited to meet you as well. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I was just kind of, I was actually, yeah, they had a, it was when they were filming Jumanji a couple of years ago here in Hawaii. Actually, it was, it was after they finished filming, sorry, but it was their press junket. So they came back, they were kind of promoting their movie, you know. Um, so Kevin Hart, all those guys, Jack Black were back here. So um, it was really not even, I actually didn't even get to interview him. I was just there to, they were only allowing us to take photos and take videos. So I was going to bring that back to KITV and um, he was walking past me and I was like, I don't know if I should do this, if it's unprofessional, but this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I got to ask him for a selfie. <laughs> it was just myself with my camera. And so, you know, I was like, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to have this chance ever again. And I, you know, he's one of my idols. So I just went for it and he was so nice. And, you know, I'm sure he gets asked that a million times a day, but he was just super cool and let me take my selfie. So that was a highlight of my year. <laughs> oh no, The Rock. He's he is so cool, and you know he every everybody that asked him for a picture. I mean, I haven't heard of anybody that he said no to. So I know he's so nice because he especially because he's so big, and I'm sure it gets old having people ask you that all the time. But he was very gracious and just as cool as I imagined him to be. So that now, was me cool. Mika, I know that you're very adventurous, and um, you helped out the Special Olympics by jumping off yeah. of a building in Waikiki. Can you tell me about that? I did, yeah. So um, Special Olympics, yeah, they raise money every year. It's a fundraiser. So, you know, they asked me to rappel off of the Hyatt in Waikiki. And of course I was just like, oh my gosh, yes, I would love to. Um, not only because it's for a great cause, Special Olympics Hawaii is so amazing, but um, I just love that kind of, I'm an adrenaline junkie for sure. I love skydiving. I love bungee jumping. I mean, I've never repelled off a, bu a building until then. So that was a really cool experience. And um, you repel down really slow, actually. So it's like 
the the hardest part was just you know getting off the building but then once you do it's such an incredible view and um and you actually get to like say hi to people in their hotel rooms and stuff as you're slowly repelling past them so <laughs> that was kind of cool and like i said it was for a great cause so i was just so happy that they asked me to do it it was fun so you wanted the repel to go faster right <laughs> yeah and you can actually control it yourself so sometimes i would make myself go fast and then other times i was like well i don't want this experience to end too fast so i just kind of started going slow because it's just you know you're overlooking waikiki and that's it not something i get to do every day so it was and it was a beautiful day that day too so it was so much fun and mika, maybe you're... i'll do it oh yeah <laughs> And Mika, you're you're making an impact in the community uh, by visiting schools and really talking to students for career day. And how how do you like uh, visiting schools with you know and seeing a lot of these students? It's it's so amazing. Um, you know, I'm just certain schools will reach out and say, "Hey, we're having a career day or we're having a read to me day. Um, you know, can you come visit these students?" And it's that's, it's honestly my favorite, any age, just because these kids are, you know, they're so young, but they're already thinking of what they want to do when they get older, and if I can help inspire them in any way, I am so happy to do that, you know, and just answer the questions and get them thinking about what they do want to do in the future, um, because, you know, they're really our future, so it's, and it's just always so fun to see the, the adorable kids, and they're always so, you know, just real and genuine and curious, so that's, i I always enjoy going to schools and doing that. There's going to be some uh, future Mika Miyashimas in there yeah. in that audience, huh? I think there is. I think there definitely is. <laughs> now, Mika, people define success in different ways. How would you define success? You know, I think um, being successful is just doing whatever you love to do um and and really going for it whatever you're passionate about and making an impact no matter what it is just go for it and if you're happy i think that's really truly being successful you know whether it's um a certain career or whether it's being a stay-at-home mom or anything like that if you're happy doing it and you're you're doing it to the best of your ability i think that is what being successful is so no that's i like I yeah, I totally like hearing that. And Mika, you know, when you look back, you know, on your career so far, I mean, you just keep advancing and advancing and advancing. Why, why are you achieving success? You know, that's a good question. And I am like, I'm so grateful for it every day because I know, you know, I don't take it for granted. I know it's, yeah, I'm very blessed. Um, but I, I think that it's just important to always constantly be learning and, and um, be open to feedback and critique from people um, and really taking in, taking what they say into account and not just brushing it off. Um, because I'm always wanting to get feedback from people. What can I improve on? What can I do better? You know, what would our audience like to see stories on? Anything like that. So I'm always constantly, I won't ever be offended. I, I appreciate when I get feedback from people. And I think that really helps me, I guess, in, um, and that's really helped me get to where I'm at now. Um, so yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. And then obviously it's always so important just to be nice to people and, and help them out if someone needs, because I know I've been in that position where I've needed help from people before and I'm really appreciative for the people that helped me along the way. So kind of give back is very important. Yeah, no, I like hearing that. And, you know, like how you said about learning, I mean, knowledge is power and, and preparation. I mean, you've done basically every job, you know, in the news industry behind the scenes. And I think that's prepared you to really be the great anchor that you are now. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, it did help, you know, because I used to actually do weather too. I was, um, I was an MMJ and then on the weekends I was doing, I was a weather anchor. Um, and so, and that helped me with my live shots because you're ad living with weather a lot. So um, yeah, I think it just kind of made me a little more well-rounded and I also got a feel for every position and, and the difficulties that each of them have. Um, so now that I'm doing what I'm doing, I understand what the MMJs are going through that we have now at KITV. You know, it's, it's tough to go out there and, but I feel like it helps to kind of know exactly what they're doing every day. Um, I think the one thing that I haven't done is like a producer, a producer or a director position, which 
I don't want to ever do. Seems really hard, but um, but yeah, so that that really helps me. Um, I guess be well well rounded. I would say in news. Yeah, that's for sure. And Mika, I want to I want to ask you: Is there a is there a adversity? You know, a big adversity situation in your life that you had to deal with that you overcame? Yeah, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is um, my mom passed away when I was in college. And so that just totally threw a curveball for me, you know, it was totally unexpected, um, my junior year. And so I had to kind of put life on pause. I had to fly home to Utah. I was there for a couple months, um, you know, and that just, and obviously things like that don't just go away. It was, it was hard. It's still hard, but, um, yeah, I think that was the biggest thing, but it also, you know, as tough as that was, it's also what motivates me at the same time. And I, I'm sure a lot of people can relate when they go through something tough, it almost pushes them because I'm doing it for her. I'm doing, you know, what would she like to see me do? And so that it's tough, but I think it really, it pushes me every day, you know? So that's been a big factor of my motivation as well. So out of everything that you learned from your mom, what's the biggest thing that stood out that you learned from her? You know, she was just such a, a fun and kind person and she was so creative and outgoing and I'm definitely not as creative as she was, um, but she, you know, everyone just loved her so much. She had the biggest heart. She was always volunteering or, or throwing parties or she was just so, so fun. Um, and so I think that's what she taught me. And she was just always so kind to everybody, um, no matter who they were. And so I just try and be like her in that aspect. I guess that's what she she taught me. Just she was very generous. So hopefully I can be like that one day. Be kind. <laughs> exactly. Now, Mika, you know, I want to ask you about leadership. You know, we we both have been on sports teams before or business teams. And we see what right. the leaders have done, whether it's good or bad. What do you feel the best leaders do? You know, I think that the best leaders obviously lead by example. So treat others how you want to be treated. And, and just, I think, helping them, helping people along in a compassionate way. Um, definitely leading by example, though. And um and not making people feel, you know, don't bel belittle anyone if they're doing something wrong. I'm just thinking at work how, um, when times get tough, how the leadership that I've experienced has been great. Um, and so, yeah, I think just working together as a team, making sure that everyone feels included. And if they're having, if they're struggling with something, take that time to really help them out, you know? And, um, and yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. No, you're right about, you know, making them feel included and, you know, communicating is, is huge, yeah. but to also make sure that everyone feels like they matter, that they're contributing. And I think that's what you guys are doing at KITV, right? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I hope so, because everyone there really does work so hard. You know, we have a, a little bit smaller of a crew, um, and but everyone there works so hard. I know no matter what position they're in, you know, whether it's producing, directing, reporting, anchoring, um, just behind the scenes, there's so much work that goes into it. And so, you know, everyone, whether it's a morning show, they get up at 1.32 a.m. or, you know, it's just everyone's working so hard. They deserve that credit. Um, so, yeah, I, I, everyone does matter, really. So hopefully yeah. they all feel like that. No, I totally agree. And Mika, I want to ask you, you know, in your life so far, what, what's a valuable lesson you've learned? You know, that's a good question. Um, I was fortunate enough to travel when I was in high school. Um, I went to India and uh, I went with some of my, my friends and my um, classmates and we went with one of our teachers. Um, and that was pretty much a life-changing trip just because it was so um, shocking. You know, we went to Mother Teresa's orphanage and we went to a leprosy colony, just all these places that like I, never would have it just it just made me realize how much I have and how fortunate I am and I came back just you know I, I remember not wanting to I was like oh gosh I've been so like gluttonous and my problems are literally nothing compared to what other people are really dealing with when they deal with these real problems so that was just a very humbling experience and I feel like even um 
yeah, I just learned a lot from that trip. You know, the power of eye contact, smiling at someone if you're walking past them, just like looking at them, little things like that, that I never thought about before that trip. Um, but I think that was the biggest, the biggest life-changing moment, I would say. It still like sticks with me every day. What, what else was eye-opening about, you know, seeing, you know, the culture and, and how, you know, the challenges that they were dealing with? Yeah, well, you know, we went to, like I said, we went to Mother Teresa's orphanage and, um, and we went to a place, it was actually for the, it was the destitute and dying. So it's people that were just basically terminally ill. And, you know, we just went and hung out with them and just spent the day with them. And it meant so much to them. Um, and then we also walked through this leprosy colony where in India they're, you know, if you have leprosy, you're pretty much just like shunned. No one even looks at you. They don't pay attention to you. So there was just, we went through there and no one touches them because, um, you know, it's a, it's passed by, I guess it's, past, I don't want to say this wrong, but basically they don't get very much attention. So walking through and shaking their hands and hanging out with them just meant so much to them. I mean, we had people that were like crying when we did that. And so that was just very um, impactful. And just realizing how much the, the little actions meant so much to them um, was really eye-opening for me. I mean, I was in high school, you know, came from Utah, didn't, I, my problems, like I said, are so minimal compared to what some of these people were dealing with. So, um, so does that answer your question? Yeah. No, <laughs> and then we went to blind school as well and that was very eye-opening too so all these you know children that couldn't see anything but they were just so happy and yeah it was just something that I I'm so grateful that I experienced yeah no you totally answered it there and Mika I want to ask you about um what is what is the best advice you ever received well I think it also stems back to that trip um my teacher at the time who took us on that trip um, you know, small acts of kindness with great, great love. That's a quote by Mother Teresa. And it's something that I really try and like live by every day because it's true. Like no matter if you can't give money or if you can't give a certain amount of time, you really can give kindness and that can go so far. Um, like I said, just with a smile or like a, a eye contact or something like that. Um, I actually have a tattoo. I have that tattoo to my side. Um, but yeah, I think that's the best advice that I ever got. I just, that's a, my favorite quote. I try and live by that every day. And yeah. Well, like you said, I mean, it's, I, I always say little victories lead to big victories. And, and that's pretty yes. much the same thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So Mika, I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. I mean, you're doing such such a great job as a news anchor. You're doing such great things in the community. And I really want to thank you for taking time today. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I had a great time. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Thank you, Mika. Take and care. Thank Aloha. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKamori.com. And my books are available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and BooksHawaii.net. I hope that Mika and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.